Have you ever stopped to think for a moment where your next meal will come from, the process it goes through, the kind of labor and countless hours spent on it? The food supply chain is in serious crisis. One of our most basic needs is being threatened thanks to rapid population growth, labor shortages, centuries of over-farming, and environmental abuse. The issue of survival is clearly a human problem here, but it could very well be the agricultural technology, such as robots and indoor farming, that will save humanity. First up, the future is indoor farming. Not to paint a horribly depressed picture of the current state of affairs, but we're in deep trouble. With a global population set to cross the 10 billion mark by 2050, the challenge of providing enough food for everyone in an efficient, sustainable, and cost-effective way is staring us right in the face. If that wasn't bad enough, the COVID-19 pandemic made it even worse. Border closures, quarantines, and supply chain disruptions, limited yields, and people's access to food, particularly in the third world countries that were hit hard by the virus or were already suffering from high levels of food insecurity. This is why there's a growing consensus that the agricultural industry needs a major overhaul. The use of new agricultural technology and indoor farming are becoming increasingly popular due to the ease and efficiency that comes with it. Attempts to use less water and chemicals, make crops less vulnerable to climate change, and deliver more consistent yields are being actively made with the help of technology. Part of the answer lies in the emerging startups that grow crops indoors, where each and every condition can be altered and controlled at whim. In 2016, the indoor farm farming industry was worth $23.75 billion, and by 2022, it's expanded to be worth a whopping $40.25 billion. These yields are often much higher than those obtained using traditional farming techniques. Indoor farming crops are produced in three dimensions rather than two, and they can be grown all year round, regardless of the weather conditions. These indoor vertical farms are very much the future of farming, and by the looks of it, also the answer to humankind's looming food crisis. So, how does vertical farming work? While we do do agree that the idea of indoor, vertically grown concept of farming sounds bizarre, many might even say that the pristine mechanical conditions of these farms are off-putting, like something out of the Matrix. But that's exactly what makes them so exciting and so futuristic. With constant innovation in lighting technology over the last decade, vertical farms have gone from mere science projects to full-fledged businesses capable of feeding thousands. As lighting costs go down and the technology gets better, it's actually the operations that we're so interested in. Vertical farms are unique in the way that some don't even require soil for plant growth. The majority are either hydroponic, where crops are grown in a nutrient-dense bowl of water, or aeroponic, where plant roots are sprayed with water and nutrients in a systematic manner. There's no sun needed here either, just your artificial grow lights that work like natural sunlight. Crazy, right? Now, it's effects on the environment. The idea might sound weird to some, but indoor farming has tons of benefits that the human race could really use right now. For starters, it can boost crop yields, overcome space limitations, and potentially lower lower farming's effect on the environment by shortening supply chain distances. Also, many of the existing vertical farms are capable of using 90% less water than your traditional farms. They use no pesticides and chemicals, barely a fraction of fertilizer, and are 100 times more productive per each square foot of land. This is not only better for the environment, but also human health, since it avoids the potential of runoff water contamination and is in line with growing customer demand for non-GMO products. Most importantly, these farms are built around and within cities, closer to the population, which means a much lower environmental impact of freighting food around the country and the world. Next, more mouths to feed? Bring in the bots. While the indoor farms are a brilliant invention that are definitely the need of the hour, there are a few drawbacks, such as the setup costs that could pose a problem for the farmers. This is where robots come in. Now, these might not be that affordable either, but they don't require a complete overhaul of the system. Instead, robots would help with the existing farms and make the process more efficient. The effects of an aging agricultural workforce and a dwindling supply of field laborers looking for less difficult work will be minimized by automation and artificial intelligence. Farmers may spend less time watching the path ahead and more time focusing on it, resulting in more sustainable harvests and profitability. Thanks to self-driving agricultural machines and autonomous drones, farmers will now be able to make better decisions, maximize resources, and optimize yields with the use of data mining and predictive analytics. Thankfully, these are not just ideas. We now have some of the most innovative emerging technology that's going to change the rules of farming forever and for good. Up next, autonomous drone seeding. Who hasn't heard of drones? They're being used almost everywhere, but this is new. At the moment, to our surprise, automated drone seeders are already broadly used in the forestry industry, but they have the potential to become more widely used in the future. How? Drone seeding allows for the replanting of difficult-to-reach locations without endangering workers. With a crew of two operators and 10 drones, we'll be able to plant 400,000 trees each day, and all is done significantly more effectively. 
respectively. Autonomous precision seeding, which combines robotics and GIS mapping, is a relatively new technique. These seeders are able to seed more accurately than typical broadcast spreading seeders or drone seeders by creating a map of a field and using information about soil factors such as density and soil quality. And then we have smart spraying. But the real star of the show? It's the smart sprayers. Farmers traditionally have always made decisions based on entire paddocks. If a pest infestation affects a few crops, they spray everything to prevent the problem from spreading, making it all an extensive and tiring process. This technology allows for the exact detection of a problem area and spraying of only the crops that are damaged. This results in lower costs, a minimal environmental impact, and lots of harvest. Also, smart sprayers are often combined with computer vision cameras to identify weeds for targeted herbicide sprays. Advanced systems may even recognize certain plants and just activate the relevant application nozzle. This would mean less waste, less herbicide resistance, and more efficient application across fields. Next, strawberry picking robots. Did you know that your favorite strawberries, like many other berries and fragile fruits, require a pretty intense picking routine? Harvesting these crops takes a significant amount of time and labor, both of which are typically in low supply. A farmer's crop will go to waste if they're unable to harvest on time, and farmers frequently run out of workers due to the grueling nature of the work. The strawberry business in particular is believed to be worth $16 billion, so it's no wonder that tech companies have already developed and used robots specifically for strawberry harvesting, with the goal of expanding into other difficult-to-handle crops in the future. A 24-arm robotic harvester designed to pick strawberries is one of Agrobot's, an agritech firm's, groundbreaking invention. The ripeness and size of the berries is identified and measured by the bot using machine learning technology. It then slices the fruit just above the calyx and grips the stem to send them to harvest containers once identified. The harvester never comes in direct contact with the strawberries in the process, reducing the chance of injury, bruising, or any contamination. Agrobot could harvest over 20 acres in just three days in countries like Canada and the United States, where the farm labor shortage is severe. And then there's livestock farming. Not just the crops, the bots have also found a place near your local livestock farm. Although it's arguably the most important industry, the livestock business is frequently disregarded and neglected. It's a vital source of renewable natural resources that we rely on on a daily basis. Machines are already milking cows and doing most of the work along with humans, but the use of livestock farming technology can help increase or improve animal and livestock productivity, welfare, and management. As more dairy herds are connected with sensors to monitor health and boost output, the concept of the connected cow has emerged. These sensors can measure daily activity and health issues, while also offering data-driven insights for the whole herd. The livestock sector right now can greatly benefit from sensors and data technologies that can increase cattle productivity and welfare by detecting sick animals and areas for improvement. Good news for food security, bad news for labor. With all that being said, we wonder where rural communities and cultures fit into the brave new world of satellite-driven tractors and robotic milking parlors. What will people do to survive in countries that are still reliant on agricultural labor? For countries in the industrial world, increasing automation will almost certainly mean that rural life will continue to shrink. But for the global south, where there are fewer urban job prospects, the issue of labor is even more concerning. It's possible that technology that removes labor from the fields may undermine efforts to reduce poverty and improve development in those countries. What do you think about robots replacing humans in the field? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more such content. See you in the next one.